I built more Telecasters and Stratocasters than I know of or can count. Recently, I built my first Jazzmaster, and I think I got a little cocky and had an inclination that I wanted and could successfully build a Jaguar. Over a month's period of time, I ordered all of the parts as I found them here and there. Most of the parts are true Fender, with the origin of manufacture being Mexico. I have to say I learned more about a specific guitar build in one build than I have learned over a long period of time with other guitar model builds. Here's what I assembled in parts for the build. I found a guy on Reverb that had a Fender made in Mexico, Jaguar neck, and various hardware like tuners, bridge, tremolo, and other parts. I got it for a good price. It included the 60s reissue Jaguar neck. Fender offset tremolo with arm and mounting screws, vintage style nickel tuning pegs, bushings, and mounting screws. I got it for $299, which the neck alone knew would cost me that. I then, for the pickups, ordered genuine Fender pure vintage 65 Jaguar guitar pickups on reverb. They were new. I thought that since I've used the Pure Vintage line on a lot of other guitars, specifically all my Jazz Masters, I figured it was a sure bet and would be a great addition to this build. I then found a Fender Player Jaguar guitar body with pickguard in Sunburst finished on eBay. And last on eBay from 1469 Music, I ordered a Fender Jaguar wiring harness with oiled caps, color correct cloth, and so on for $119. If you are building or upgrading your Jaguar, make sure you know what type of routing you have for the wiring. My body has the specific compartments with wiring feed through holes drilled connecting each. More modern bodies are one large routed cavity instead of the individual compartments. How this affects you is determining what wiring harness type you need to order. I needed to order a wiring harness that came in three distinct parts that the wires then needed to be fed through the body and then soldered to the other components. The wiring harness for the large single cavity comes pre-assembled and is actually pretty easy because all you do is drop it into the body and then solder your pickups in. I have to admit that the wiring of a Jaguar is a little intimidating at first. The design uses points on the body as its common ground interconnecting all of the separate components. I'm used to on my Telecaster builds of having direct grounds between the different components in the wiring harness. My used body looked great, but I found had some issues. The first issue is about half of the screw holes were stripped out after years of screwing screws in and out. And I ended up having to glue pieces of dowel into over half of the holes with some wood glue before I could get screws to hold when reassembling. The next issue is the body no longer had a ground path for the wiring circuit. Someone had pulled all of it out. I ended up taking about an hour and rebuilding this back out. I thought this was going to be easy because the body appeared to have conductive paint in the cavities. It was the least conductive conductive paint I've ever encountered. Using a multimeter, I could place two leads next to each other in the same compartment and didn't matter which compartment and I would not have continuity at all. I finally placed a screw in each compartment to be the point of ground. I then soldered lugs to the ends of wires and built out my ground frame. It did actually still have the bridge ground wire still installed. When I first assembled my wiring harness, I could not make the rhythm or neck pickup work at all in either circuit, both lead or rhythm. I kept thinking it had to be something I had done or not done when connecting the wiring harness and I kept going over my work. At one point I actually desoldered everything and then literally started from scratch again with exactly the same output. My problem was that I could not bring myself to believe that it was possible that the new pickup was bad from the factory. I really should have just put it on a multimeter and ruled it out and I didn't and I was kind of pissed at myself. It turned out that it was bad after all. For the sake of this video, I installed a set of pickups that I had that was at one time in a Fender Vintage modified Jaguar. I have sent the Fenders back for a refund and was happy to find a new set of Lawlers for a great price that I'm going to install at a later time. Once I installed the neck, I found that I did need a shim installed and installed a 0.5 degree maple shim and the problem of not being able to lower the string height without bottoming the bridge out was solved. I went on vacation before this build and I caught some sort of flu-like bug that it's unlike nothing else I've experienced for a long time and that includes COVID.
I was actually bedridden for three days. You can still hear it in my voice, and it took me twice as long to record the voiceover for this video because I kept on having coughing spasms. I was really sick while I was building this guitar, but oddly enough, I still had fun and look forward to future modifications to this guitar. I'm looking forward to installing the Lawler pickups and seeing if I can modify the rhythm circuit to add some more top ends so it seems to be more useful to me. It's a little flat. I may also purchase and install a better bridge and tremolo system. In the end, the Jaguar guitar, like the cat, is a challenging and beautiful beast. A beast that if you have a struggle with and walk away from victorious, you actually feel quite the accomplishment.